How do we relate the Bhagavad Gita into our daily life? Today I'm talking with Shamananda, my husband, about the first chapter of the Bhagavad Gita. Hello, Yogi. Welcome to my podcast. I'm Aiko, and on this show we explore ways to put spiritual theory into sustainable practice. Welcome, Sham, my dear husband, to my podcast. I'm so happy to have you here. Thank you, my wife, for inviting me <laughs> to your podcast. It's an honor to be here. Okay. Mm, today, Sham will talk with us about the first chapter of the Bhagavad Gita. As you all know, Bhagavad Gita is a must reading if we are yogi or yogini or practitioners. And um, can you explain to us a little bit about the first chapter and how can we relate this? into our day-to-day -day life and into yoga what that's how can we relate like a war in a kingdom between two families actually it's one um into yoga very good question many good questions and uh, <laughs> <laughs> um it's a very uh, complex topic actually but um, uh, to start somewhere it's um and put it in very simple terms it's a it's a battle between dharma and non dharma and uh and arjuna the main character who is who's is on the good side you know with the good guys to make it simple of course it's nothing is ever simple and there are good guys on the other side too and arjuna's uh, plight here is that he has to Uh, give up his attachments and that is what we all have to do uh, like we either have to do it before we die or we're gonna die <laughs> <laughs> so can you explain what you mean with the dharma and adharma so uh, also this is very complex but again to make it simple dharma is to do the right thing non-dharma is when you, you fail to do the right thing and um, an arjuna here has to give up objectification which is in a, in a very interesting setting in the setting of a war and where it looks like it looks like when he had, has doubts about the war that he's actually very noble but really what he's doing is justifying his um, objectification and he is now in a situation where where he will fight it will actually benefit uh, both sides like also those who who are aggressors here that he will that he may kill will actually be uh, liberated as it is as this war has been played out on a, on a sacred battlefield and and there are many just auspicious um, things in the surroundings so like the only the only really issue he has here is are his his attachments and this is a very difficult um like we are supposed like like often we hear that we are kind of supposed to identify with arjuna here and that may be very difficult it's um it's really hard to to kind of have your attachments pointed out and and having to give them up can you explain which kind of attachments Arjuna has now because maybe someone didn't read the Bhagavad Gita. Mm. Yet. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> it is actually like the the root, like like material attachments in general, like attachment to, uh, like the spirit at, uh, attaching itself to the material world. And it is uh, it takes the form of objectification. We usually hear of objectification like. We objectify animals, for example, uh, and don't like let them be what they are. But we put them in in cages and do like what we want with them uh, mm -hmm. for our purposes. Uh, and um, but the thing is that this is what we're doing with the world in general. And so it's like the the very root of attachment here that that Arjuna has to uh, cut. And while it's very difficult to put oneself in Arjuna's situation, 
it may be easier to put oneself in, in Dhritarashtra's situation. He's kind of the, the the cause of the war in a sense, and and he is hearing the the whole story being narrated by Sanjaya here in the in the Mahabharata. And Sanjaya is is a uh, is very wise, and so he gets to hear this uh, the whole narration from a wise person who has insights into all these things and and whereas arjuna understands kind of immediately like of i mean not really immediately it's it takes an hour or so but <laughs> that's very fast still uh dhritarashtra takes way longer uh, to understand but still he he does understand in in the end although it, it so we can maybe identify more with that. We can put ourselves in Dhritarashtra's situation. He hears this whole conversation between Krishna and Arjuna. And uh, and at the end of his life, he he starts like a more spiritual practice. And it is described in, in other sacred literature that uh, Dhritarashtra, after many lifetimes of practice, attains perfection. Mm. Yeah, because the Bhagavad Gita is uh, a conversation between Arjuna and Krishna during this battlefield, and um, maybe you want to give some background or how what is happening there. Yes, it's um, it's a very long and complicated and uh, story full of intrigues. But basically, you have two brothers uh, who. Like one of them is supposed to inherit the kingdom, and it's usually the firstborn, but the firstborn was blind. It's this Dhritarashtra that I mentioned. Uh, the secondborn, Pandu, then becomes the king, and then they both have children, and then Pandu dies, and uh, early, then, you know, his sons are supposed to inherit the kingdom, but then Dhritarashtra's sons are saying, like, well, our father was supposed to be the king. Like, he was first born, okay? He was blind, but he was the first born. So, like, we are not blind, so we should have the kingdom. And then there's a lot of intrigue, and mm-hmm. finally it ends up being this battle of Kurukshetra. But this is all kind of like a setup, because it is actually about these, these deeper deeper teachings, but it is being played out in this way, this kind of drama of the Mahabharata. So, what is... Uh... Because now we are talking about the first chapter of this uh, Bhagavad Gita. So what would you say, just focusing on the first chapter, like the teachings behind and how can we apply them into our lives? Yes, so this first chapter is called uh, like the yoga of despair. You could say also the yoga of doubting. So like every chapter in the Bhagavad Gita is called something with yoga it's some sort of yoga uh, and you could say the Bhagavad Gita is how to turn everything into yoga even despair and doubting so what Arjuna is doing is that he's he's expressing all all his doubts to uh, to Krishna who is a who is a form of God who who is one of the characters in, in Mahabharata he's a humble character uh, he is the charioteer of Arjuna here, so he's said to be God himself, but he's t- taking on a very humble role in the play. He's he's not f- forcing himself <laughs> unnecessarily on anyone, and uh, so Arjuna is expressing his doubts to him, uh, to Krishna, and this is what we what we need to learn. And all like although we like maybe like I said maybe we can't put ourselves directly in Krishna's position, but we can like listen to the story with the with, uh, like Dhritarashtra from someone who is who has wisdom so that it kind of the wisdom will sink in gr- gradually it may take lifetimes is the point so would you say like for example that the first chapter is teaching you how to actually express all your attachment and see your blockages in life to make a kind of statement and express this either to God or to the universe or whatever you believe in. Yes, yes, we should definitely express all our doubts. We 
yes if we if, if we don't have anyone near to us who we who we trust to be wise enough to point out our uh, rationalizations um what is it called in psychology the defense mechanisms mm. and so on you can ask the universe like am like am i on the right track here you you express your doubts and in some way you will receive an answer arjuna has a very uh he sounds like all his doubts actually like, like all the things he brings up like all the reasons not to fight of course they ha- like they are good arguments the only issue is that he is they're not actually his like the honest reason why he doesn't want to fight like the actual reason he he does not want to fight is that he's attached to objectification yeah and it's very important to to see i think because often we think like oh i don't want to do that this or that but we don't see the reason behind why we don't want to do that so it's not just that we want that we can express we don't want to for example wash the dishes but uh, or do this specific job is like why so it's more a, a kind of um inner yeah it's more like a an introspection we have to do in order to be honest in expressing our our doubts right yes like we have to do both in- introspection ourselves and also be be open to hearing from others but the interesting here thing here like krishna is there with him and and he's simply like pointing out to him he's he's not like, like krishna is not actually forcing arjuna th- uh, to fight it just happens to be that the right thing to do for arjuna is to fight and krishna, mm. and krishna is pointing out like th- the reason why arjuna is actually uh, resisting very beautiful thank you for sharing these things i think next time we can talk about the second chapter what yes is it? yeah thank that sounds you. good thank you so much it was beautiful to have you here beautiful to be here <laughs> thank you I hope this episode fulfilled its purpose of inspiring you. If you like it, feel free to share it, give a review or a rating, subscribe. And if you have any questions, please get in touch at aikoyogareiki.com. Namaste.